What's up guys, Devil Dog Gamer here, and today we are going to be talking about War Thunder. With the recent addition of the past few patches, we've gone from planes and tanks to now jets, guided missiles, helicopter, air-to-air -air missiles, naval forces, uh, you name it, the game's got it. And I'm, a, I'm just really excited for the the what this game has become. It just has so much going for it, there's so many cool things in it. But the future creates this giant open door of what we can do. And right now, because of these updates, we have a bit of an issue when it comes to balance. The main fact is American and Russian. Um, the Americans are top tier right now. The Abrams spam is real, and it decimates if it's unchecked. Not only that, the the lack of SPAA that can reach out and touch things because the helicopters are crazy. Um, there is a problem, and I hope it gets fixed, that the TOWs, TOW missiles for example, do not have a limited range. Uh, the TOW-2 has a max range of 3,750 meters. The TOW-2 Arrow, uh, which I hope we have installed on, on the, uh, the AH-1, has a max range of 4,500 4, meters. But they can just reach out and touch anybody. There's no max distance for them. And that keeps you well outside of any AAA fire um, that we currently have in the game. And that's one of the issues. And that coupled with the fact that the Abrams are just unstoppable leads to a balance issue. So mainly as a ground forces and a naval forces and air, some air, aircraft in the ground forces player, um, I kind of want to talk about what we can possibly do in the future, what Gaijin can add, and some of the things that we might see in the future that would help balance out the things. I'm not going to go too deep into aircraft because I don't know how they're going to do radar. So we're kind of limited to certain aircraft because unless they do something with air-to-air -air missiles and radar, I can't sit there and say, hey, we're going to add a MiG-25 or an F-16 because I don't know how they're going to do AIM-120s, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep it to heaters and optically guided weapons for the most part, uh, when it comes to that. Uh, as helicopters, not really gonna touch that because you, the, that's a natural progression. We already have the AH-1, we're gonna have the, you're gonna have the K-50, you're gonna have the Apache. It's just, that's just how it's gonna be. I mean, your helicopters, you're already maxed with capabilities already, so helicopters are covered. You're gonna see them all. <laughs> so, you know, we're not waiting on any helicopter capabilities. So. We're going to kind of start with the Russian ground vehicles um, because right now you have the T-72A, the T-80, and the T-64B uh, BV that are the main contenders for Russia. You throw them against the Abrams and you're going to kind of have a bad day. Also, I'm not really going to talk about the Abrams variants. We all know we're going to get the M1A1. You know we're going to get the M1A2, so we'll leave it at that. But one of the things we could add in that might definitely help is the T-72 Bravo. It has composite armor along with the um, ATGM launcher, which would definitely help with choppers and aircraft because you can hit with them. It can come fitted with Contact 1, and I believe there are also uh, newer variants, which you know I'm sure you can find on the, the, the internet, which are... Um, updated with Contact 5. So there could be multiple variants of the T-72 Bravo, and I think that could be a really cool addition um, as a stronger asset than the T-72. But we can also get into the T-80 variants, which there are tons of T-80 variants. The biggest one being the T-80U. The T-80U itself is just nasty. It's a very, very nasty <laughs> tank. And um, it comes default with Contact 1. But there are other variants of it that are even better. You get down to the T-80UD, which is a huge upgraded one, replaced with Contact 5, and just has a ton of different um, you know, art, new armor and all kinds of stuff like that. The T-80U and the T-80UD would definitely, definitely be huge additions into the game and would definitely help the Russians out a ton on the ground. And there's even more variants of the T-80 that you could get really in depth with, uh, the T-80UM. Um, there's also the T-80BVM, which is installed with the Relic 
Relict ERA, which is even better, um, and just do some amazing things with it. You can even do the, the Black Eagle, which is a prototype which has the Catechus ERA and a new auto loader. We could go for days. Russians make tanks. We could go for days before we ever get to, you know, an armada. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but also on the sense as if we're into Russian tanks, now that we have stingers and IR guided missiles, we can get the Tunguska. Um, I'm not going to jump right to the tour, but we can get the Tunguska as a next up from the Shilka um, to be able to take out things in the air with, you know, you know, uh, IR guided weapons and guns to kind of help against the, the fighters and the chopper spam to actually have choppers kind of instead of hovering, you know, 2,000 feet in the air, spamming freaking ATGMs. Now they got to go map of the earth and pop up and fire and hide and you know like choppers actually do. <laughs> so that could be a really good addition into the Russian tech tree and those tanks would just really help even the field until we get the A the M1A1 and the M1A2 and the T90. Of course the T90 and its variants would definitely level the playing field against the A1 and the A2. Um, and you can even go from there even further because there's been modifications to the T90 and above. So for right now, I mean, the T80 variants and the T72 variants could help level the playing field in the immediate future with, along with the Tunguska. Now getting to American vehicles, you know, if you want to match the Tunguska, there's tons of things. There's a, hum a, a, Vim a Humvee Avenger, which, meh, I don't think we should add. Personally, I think we should add the LAVAD. The LAVAD would be perfect, not only because it has stingers and a nice big ass fucking road, uh, Gatlin gun on it that could take out a ton of shit. Um, it also opens the door to not only that, but the LAVAT, which fires toes from an elevated uh, launching platform, and the LAV25 with its badass gun on it, which would just decimate pretty much. You know, it's speed alone. I've, I'm an LAV guy. I, I've trained in the LAV. I've driven the LAV. I've fired the gun on the LAV. Those things can get nasty fast really freaking quick. And their guns aren't to be trifled with if you're in the wrong position. Um, so I think those could be a very good variants. Along with that, we could also get the M6 linebacker, which is a Bradley with stingers as air defense. Um, that could add in a whole bunch of different aspects to kind of covering the ground, you know, the ground and the air and being helpful and, you know, kind of eliminating the chopper spam as it is. Um, along with that, we have the British who are in desperate need of a Chally 2, which I don't see coming until we have the A1, the T90, or the A2. So I think the Chally 2 itself is going to be a long way coming but you Brits you got some you got some work to do to be honest um, because that thing is gonna be it's you're not gonna see it for a while I feel like um, it, it's just it would just it would just throw off the balance completely if it gets thrown into the game right now uh, along with the French the French need a, a, a 10 BR vehicle and then the Leclerc 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 I think I'm saying it right, would be the perfect addition, uh, starting with the Series 1, I feel like. You can get into the multiple series if you want, but I think the Series 1 would be a great addition to the French, because right now, the uh, AMX 30s are not cutting it, um, and they're just getting stomped pretty hard. Even though their pen is fantastic, they just get stomped super, super hard, and it's, it's just not even funny. Um, Along with ground vehicles, though, we're going to move to aircraft. Now, uh, I'm going to start with Russian aircraft because the, you know, we're starting to get into the ground attack. We're getting into the fighters and stuff like that. The natural progression from the MiG-19 would be a MiG-21, which I think, in, in, in turn, we would need something that could take out the MiG-21. Now, I'm not calling for an F-4 Phantom. What I would like to see is the F-8 Crusader, the last gunfighter. F-8 Crusader versus MiG-21 would be a perfect balance. Perfect balance right there. 
absolutely perfect. Even though it goes in favor of the F8, it would be just a very good tier-to-tier, toe-to-toe uh, aircraft. So I think those two would be great additions for the air power uh, of both nations. Along with that, if you wanted to get the ground attack, um, the, the Russians kind of have a, a weird spot when it comes to ground attack, but I think um, a weird program that led to the SC-25 might be a good fit, and that's the Aleutian 102. Think of it as the IL-2's big brother and a jet-powered, just huge ordnance ground attack aircraft that was uh, pretty much the precursor to the SU-25 without its OP-ness of the SU- If we added an SU-25 into the game right now, it would be just game-breaking uh, with the amount of ordnance that thing can, that thing could carry. I think it would just be... It would be too much. But the, the Aleutian 102 would have enough unguided uh, ordnance and heavy ordnance that I think it would be great along with its slow speed. It would have to be a, in competent hands to be useful and to be OP. Uh, back to the American ground attack, the A7 would Corsair, of course, would be a great addition along with the A4 Skyhawk if you wanted to get into that. But of course, the big daddy of them all, the A6 Intruder, would be my go-to uh, when it comes to ground attack. Um, when it would, when it comes to this era that we're kind of sitting in, in this weird area, um, that thing would just be the bee's knees perfectly. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, I want to see. You know, we're going to move into naval forces. I want to see battleships. I know we were into the light cruisers. I think we can get the maps big enough. We've been testing the maps big enough for battleships. We can do it, and we need it. If we can get battleships, heavy cruisers, the game could just... Oh, we could get we could go from World War II to Cold War and just have so many things. So many things covered. Oh my god, could you imagine? I think it could happen. And I hope and I pray that we're pushing towards it. I feel like it's not really a priority right now um, for Gaijin, but damn, battleships would be amazing. Now, if you watched uh, one of Fly's recent videos, you will see that the 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 backbone of the submarine. If you remember the submarine April Fools um, day, that is still in game. The underwater gameplay, the sonar, active, passive, that's all still in game. Which, as we all know, April Fools are always tests for something else. Um, and I feel like we're gonna get subs. We need to get subs. I think we some of the some of the patrol boats have depth charges. It just all makes sense that we're going to get subs at some point. That would be amazing gameplay, and I definitely think we need to we need to beat World of Warships to that, um, in a sense, because uh, we really, really, really need that. That would just be amazing, and I really enjoyed the the gameplay that we had with the April Fools event, even though it was modern day subs. Could you imagine U-boats having a surface periscope depth, you know, to launch torpedoes? Oh, it would be amazing. I think that would be awesome. But kind of to backtrack, I missed the the German um, <laughs> ground vehicles. Um, right now we're at the Leopard 2A4. I feel like we desperately need a Leopard 2A5 ASAP to at least put it on par with what we're getting from the Russians. Uh, do we want to jump to a 2A6 and a 2A7? Not exactly. I don't think we need to right now. But I think when we get to an M1A1, M1A2, T90, definitely need to see two A6s and two A7s. But as of right now, the 2A4 is lacking and we desperately need a 2A5. And I know there's a 2A5 sitting in there somewhere and we, we desperately, desperately need it. Um, but yeah, I'm loving War Thunder. If you haven't gotten into it, you need to because the future is gonna be crazy. And if you're not grinding right now, you're going to miss out on all the cool shit once it's released, to be completely honest. So I highly recommend, and trust, trust me, I have, grant, I have grinded three accounts. I have gotten two jets on one account, 
on three nations. I have gotten the top tier ground vehicles on two nations on another account. And my current account, I have grinded top tier on pretty much all nations. And I'm almost done grinding top tier jet uh, aircraft on all nations. So it is doable. And I don't even, I play this game maybe 15, 20 minutes a day unless I'm recording it. So you can do it. It is possible. This game has it all. It's going to have it all. And I highly suggest you check it out. But these are my hopes, dreams, predictions for the future and balancing. And I hope you guys agree, disagree. Um, if you have any more suggestions, you know, because the, the A-10 is coming at some point. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't want you to see that in the comments. Let me know in the comments below. Talk to you guys later. Peace.